So, my name's Terrell. Um, about 15 years or so ago, um, when I first met my husband, I thought of a brilliant idea to bring our families together and our friends together. And so I was gonna make a zine, which is kind of like a little handmade book or personal book. Um, I was gonna make a zine with all the different individuals and our family and friends uh, visions of the future. So they could write something or draw something and I sent everybody a couple of pages for them to draw in or write in. And I was imagining all kinds of really cool things coming back and I was imagining this beautiful book that I would give everybody on our big wedding day as little, you know, wedding favors and mementos of our collective sort of group of the people, you know, the people that we brought together. Well, <laughs> it didn't happen. And why it didn't happen was a learning process that has taken me almost 15 years to figure out of why people didn't want to think about the future. And a few people did respond to me, just, just to be clear. I did get some back. Um, but for the majority, uh, they either ignored it or if I asked them about it, they actually got defensive and angry about it. Um, so now, now I kind of understand why. It, it, I've, I've spent a decade and a half sort of, not specifically on this problem, but in general the problem of why people are so pessimistic and angry and defensive and focused on just their, their own day-to-day -day problems as opposed to being able to think big thoughts and think about their future and think positively about the world and themselves. And through this whole process, I've come up with two different directions of approaching the problem. And as with everything, and I talk about this a lot, there are bottom-up processes, which are decentralized, the sort, of, the sort of multiple different approaches all at the same time kind of congealing into an emergent process. And then there's the centralized or top-down approach where everyone is sort of following the same infrastructure, the same rules, um, ideally democratically and voluntarily, but you know, it's still a centralized system. And if you look at my previous, pod, uh, previous video, um, I talk about this a little bit more. So if you're interested in the sort of centralized and decentralized aspects, um, go back and watch that one. Um, but so there are these two processes, and both of these are necessary. They are literally inhalation and exhalation. Inhaling is when you centralize the air into your centralized core system, and so all of the air is in there. And then exhalation is it, it disperses, it decentralizes, it goes everywhere. And so these processes are necessary. They're the, the flex and flow in and out, um, up and down variations of reality. So we get these two systems in our whole planet. And I'm thinking of our planetary future, which sometimes I call planetary procreation, which is where our planet gets so healthy and so mature that it starts making baby planets. It's, it reaches uh, its adult, or at least adolescent stage, where it's so mature that it can actually procreate, it can actually make new civilizations that go out into the universe. So part of this process, I have designed a decentralized and a centralized process, architecture, system, whatever you want to call it, algorithm, um, for helping us all get there. And it starts with the bottom up, as far as I have a system where we go through the different, um, the different elements of our own learning process, which I've also discovered is the grieving process. It's the same process. Um, and there are lots of different ways to segment it. And I've gotten down to about four 
to four different segments. There, I've, at one point, I had I think seven. Um, so if you've seen the speaking up process that I've done, this is the same thing, only it's sort of congealed into four different elements of a cycle, except it's a spiraling cycle. So from this direction, it looks like a circle. From this side, it looks like a corkscrew or a spiral. Um, so it's progressing. It's an evolving process, but it does look like a cycle. Um, so there are four elements of that, and I could call them a lot of different things, fight, flight, freeze, and flow, um, create, explore, dream, and do. So there are a lot of different ways of describing these categories, but it's a process, um, and I call it the speaking up process. And this is a bottom-up process where we start where we are in a negative space or at least in a, an emotional space where we're reacting to something that's happened. So we think about the individuals who have impacted us in our lives, uh, the people, places, and things that have impacted us and, and made our lives better, um, and then maybe something happened. And that could be a positive thing or a negative thing. And, it, and we're usually focused on the negative thing, at least these days. Uh, but you can focus on a positive thing. The process will work the same way. If you fo start focusing on positive thing, you get to a, a scientific perspective more quickly um, and a, a solution space more quickly. But uh, the speaking up process is, is a, a, a repeated cycle, a spiraling cycle. So you can start wherever you want and, and it'll still get you to the same Point. You can just you can start over here, or you can start in the middle and move up. Um, so I have that speaking up process, and then that process allows us to get to the top down process, which is what I call our global nervous system. And there's also a global circulatory system, which is obviously tied into the you know it's it, it needs to be tied into the the nervous system so that the information, which is the nervous system, is informing the circulatory system on how to direct things. So I've come up with the nervous system diagram. Um, and there's also a circulatory system diagram that's parallel. It looks exactly the same, um, but it's physical stuff. So, but I'm designing a system for the internet. It's basically internet 3.0 or 4.0 or whatever we want to call it. So, um, this process, which I've only just recently come up with, with huge inspiration and shout out to my friend, speaker, John Ash. Very cool. Very cool guy. Super cool. Super cool, man. So cool. He inspired me to think about the system that I had been designing um, as a top-down centralized system with, quote, tokens, a kind of monetary quantification system, which I normally reject, but because the whole idea of money is, is uh, antisocial, because it's not a collective, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't support um, collective needs. And, and if you check, uh, Speaker John Ash has a video on that. This is wonderful. And it very much reminds me of a concept that I refer to as social proof of work. But he inspired me to, to think about this in a quantification process, which means that we actually, instead of using a zero sum system, which is m money, in which case only I can have my money, which seems logical, but uh, in order for me to give you money, I have to lose money. But in a system where we're supporting one another, um, and also on the internet in general, so if you think about um, likes uh, on YouTube or followers, there's a quantification system there, but it's not a zero sum, it's a positive sum. So if I go onto the internet and I like something, I don't lose my likes. I still have all of the likes that people have given me generously. So it's a, a, a generosity, a giving system. So it's a positive sum system. And thinking about this allowed me to realize that when we have a centralized system, such as a, a nervous system or a circulatory system that helps us connect to one another in a, in a way that helps resources flow from where they are, to where they need to go, 
um, we can use a quantification system and that's um, in the internet especially in things where we're talking about machine learning uh, we have weights and that means that's sort of the value of the offer or the, the, the request so for example if I I would like to request a home I would like to request a place to live and do my work and you know just exist a place to store my stuff and you know just be myself um, so I would put that request out there and that is a high priority for me so I would put that as the top t priority in my system and now we can rank it any way we want um, but the idea is that that there's a, a, a core ranking system for giving weight to our priorities to the things that we need in life whether that's a home or if we want to have you know more sculptures like this this is a temporary sculpture that's just here today uh, or this week or so um, you know if we want more sculptures in our parks you know we can put that off that request out there and you know and give it some weight now maybe it's not the top priority but you know it's still a priority so we can give it a lower priority than say housing or food or clean water or facilities to eliminate our waste and that sort of thing so there's this weighting system and that is the centralized token um, that we can use in a in a new internet so i've developed this architecture and it's a complicated looking thing but it actually has a very specific mathematical and physics based um, core to it so it's actually pretty logical and once you kind of understand it it makes a lot more sense um, it follows the pattern of pascal's triangle which gives us all possible combinations of relationships of interactions with the universe so if i'm expressing something and getting something back and i'm getting something back from a larger group or an individual you know all of these different relationships are represented in the system so this architecture is a design for a whole new internet and what i imagine is that we use the bottom-up system to inform the top-down system and they kind of meet in the middle there's this interweaving from the top down and the bottom up and then using that we can direct all of our resources initially we can start directing just the nervous system so the internet we can direct information around but then using that information in different uh, local areas local networks local community spaces and home spaces and personal spaces like our phones each of these spaces can have its own interface with the information and use that information to direct physical resources for, so that the circulatory system of the planet can really kick online. We have a, we have a minimal one, we have a, a rudimentary one, but it's, it's like, it's you know, pre-adolescent right now. Um, it connects just some of the planet together. And the same thing is true for the internet. So my goal is to connect the whole planet together voluntarily, everyone who wants to connect to it, um, can directly and then indirectly anyone who doesn't want to connect to it can at least still share any information they want or get any information they need in an indirect way say through a book or a radio station or you know whatever more through first person interactions with other people who are on the internet so this is my big big idea and i have been working up to this idea for a long time uh, starting, like I said, from when I first met my husband and a whole bunch of things happened all around at that time where I was trying to solve problems and it seemed like I needed to step out of the, the problem itself into some sort of higher understanding of how life works and how humanity works and how systems work. And that whole process has led me to now to this sort of big idea of the infrastructure and the processes and the algorithms or whatever you want to call them to actually make this happen and i imagine this starting to happen on smaller scales so anyone who wants to pick this system up uh, who wants to work with me or even not work with me just look at the information and take whatever you want from it and try it out um, i will provide as much information as possible to anyone who wants it and all for free 
Um, this is all fully nonprofit, fully decentralized, fully um, open source, whatever you want to call it. Um, however, I do need some things in order to continue the work. Uh, I need things to actually live. So that would be very helpful if anybody wanted to help me out with that. Um, talk to me personally or uh, my email. Uh, my email, by the way, is the wise turtle. T H E W I S E T U R T L E at gmail.com. Um, and please do email me. I love emails. You can also find me on Reddit under username Turl, T U R I L, or on Twitter, I am Turl Kronberg. Uh, and also, uh, I'm at The Wise Turtle. So, any of those places, please contact me or just leave a, a note under the YouTube thing here. Um, and I'm also, oh, my, uh, my blog is turl, T-U-R-I-L dot O-R-G. Uh, you can get me there. Um, and I would love to answer any questions about this. And I would like to help anyone test this out in a smaller network, in a larger network, whatever you want. Um, I know it's complicated looking, but, and I don't even fully understand, like, how it would be applied to any system. Um, but I have a very basic core understanding of this process and of the bottom up and the top down and figuring out how to merge them is probably the biggest question that I have. Um, so if you have any ideas on that, let me know. This could be really big and I think this could be incredibly useful and possibly not the only approach, but definitely approach that so far in my life Definitely the bottom-up one has worked beautifully for helping me understand myself and other individuals. Um, and I'm hoping that the top-down process fleshes out in a nice way so that we can meet in the middle and use that to direct everything so that we can all have more of what we need to be our best selves so that humanity can be its best self so that our whole planet Earth, happy Earth Day, I'm recording this on Earth Day, so that our whole planet Earth can be uh, thriving and procreative in a culturally planetary kind of level. Okay, thank you very much and namaste.